Let's make sure we're live streaming. Sounds coming out okay. And there we are. Cool. Hi everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today is October 30th, 2019. And uh, this stream is uh, our drop-in math tutoring session number six for the 2019-2020 school year, right? Uh, we did a bunch of these, a whole bunch of these last year for the 2018-2019 school year. And uh, I just decided to start numbering them per year basis. So for this school year, this is number six that we're doing. And again, we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of these on a regular basis. Um, once a week, once every two weeks, two every two weeks, back to back, uh, as need be, right? So it's basically me uh, making myself available for a couple of hours a day or a couple of hours per stream um, to help you guys out in math if you need it, okay? Uh, aside from that, we're just going to chill, wait until people roll in. If there's any math questions that people have, for sure post them and we'll deal with it right off the bat. And this is uh, basically, um, what do you call it, uh, math live stream. So no matter what we're talking about, because this is an open discussion, no matter what we're talking about, questions about mathematics take precedent, right? So if you have any questions regarding math, uh, don't worry about interrupting anything that we're talking about. Just post a question and we'll pause whatever it is, if it's not math related or whatnot, and uh, we'll talk about it. Aside from that, hello, Hannah, how are you doing? Why do you have to go live right before my phone interview? Oh no, go to your phone interview. We're going to be doing this for a couple of hours, Hannah. So, you know, you're going to be, uh, we'll be here most likely, as long as your phone interview doesn't go more than a couple of hours, of course, right? Intrepid, how are you doing? How's life? Haven't seen you for a while. I think anyway. Taco, taco, how's life? Afternoon, Chicho, Twitching Jason. Twitching Jason, how's life? They are calling me. I go to the interview, man. Interview comes first. Yay! Woo Good luck, by the way. If it's a job interview, I hope you get it. If it's a project interview, I hope you get the project or whatever it is. It will go too long. Cool, cool. We'll be here, brother. We'll be here, man. If you, if you need to uh, hop in, uh, talk about whatever right math of course being the main focus for this stream and physics of course or sciences as well right a ah, little puppy deliciousy 16 holly cool um we've had a couple of live streams in the last uh, three days or so we talked about uh, the julian assange and whatnot i made a boo-boo on uh, twitch uh showed a video when we're talking about the Chile protest and about some of the violence taking place. And I didn't realize uh, we weren't allowed to do that stuff on Twitch. Uh, so we deleted that video. It will be loaded on uh, YouTube and BitChute today. <laughs> okay, most likely after the stream. My sister got in touch with a high school friend who is site architect. And he said he needs a tile setter. And that's me. Oh, tile setter. So you got the job. You got a job. Tile work. Setting tiles is hard work, Taco. Okay, really hard work. You're on your knees. It's. It puts a lot of pressure on your knees. It puts a lot of pressure on your back, right? So learn what you need to learn. Make the money you need to make. Um, make sure you're doing things right when it comes to doing tile work, especially if it's on the ground. If it's on the walls, it's not as bad, but on the ground, you're leaned over it's it's physically very taxing okay you learn a lot though and it makes you stronger oh you're waiting on the phone call okay okay cool olive good evening how are you doing a good afternoon for me good morning to anyone watching this in the morning or late late evening graphing cubic roots when they are in the exponent graphing cubic roots Graphing cubic roots when they are an exponent. Okay, let me think about that. Uh, graphing cubic roots when they are an exponent. Let me see if I understood you correctly, Hannah. I know, I went to high school to learn tile setting and they gave me knee pads. Yeah, you need the knee pads, the knee covers and the elbow stuff and everything, right? Officially sent out my application yesterday for Penn State. Oh, wow. 
gonna try to finish this stupid degree I thought I'm gonna go for software engineering and the math courses I'm seeing listed for it sound ridiculous yeah they will be but great choice software engineering you get that degree get some experience twitching Jason you're set for life right as long as you know you manage your life and finances and the stresses and the burdens of life well enough so two x to the power of cube root so you're doing this right f of x is equal to two x to the power of cube root of 32 x plus three wow cube root of 32 x plus three that's what you're graphing is that it that's a tough one right that's a tough one let me know if that's 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 the case that's what you're graphing i haven't done we don't do we don't go this level in high school thumbs up poof, poof. so look here's the thing when graphing functions hannah okay what you have to do is keep in mind what the base graph looks like right i personally don't know what the base graph but the base graph of this would be this but sometimes we used to wet sand and soft scrap as uh, improvised knee pads wow howdy osh nyap how are you doing how is life welcome to another live stream I did uh thank you for the follow by the way boss uh, dad just a quick question because i don't have my earplugs in did uh did the live stream make a sound when uh, boss i forgot the name uh when someone followed because i went into stream labs like reduced the sound and killed off some of the sound notifications so it wouldn't interrupt our uh, our discussion especially if we're doing live uh asmr work and stuff throwback to college math classes i didn't hear it i just saw a zombie running okay awesome thank you taco so I did that correctly. We were getting, when I was listening to it on the last couple of streams, we were getting a lot of sounds coming in. They were pretty loud. So I kicked down the sound or turned it off for some of them. But thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for whatever support you give in this direction, right? My apologies if I'm not going to cash things, right? So what you want to keep in mind is what the base function of this looks like, right? So one of the base functions of this, I'm not sure if they do the base function as x to the power of x or they do the base function as x to the power of q root of x all right i actually don't know what that one looks like i, I don't encounter it often we could go, i could go online and punch these in here let me go online and punch this in instead of trying to figure it out right well should we try to figure it out let's try to figure it out it's, it's sort of rude not trying to figure this out right so take a look at this let's graph this and let's graph this let's make a table of values okay x let's call this let's call this f of x let's call this f of x1 let's call this f of x2 okay let's see what we end up getting here's f of x uh, da, 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 da. we're gonna do f of x1 and we're gonna do f of x2 f of x2 okay i have a math app to show me step by step do you okay sweet Boop. i'm a software developer now but i have no formal background in programming about two years you're a software developer but no formal background in programming about two years into my first job since dropping out Either way, I may be dropping into these math live streams more often over the coming months. Awesome, Twitching Jason. I hope I hope can talk about some of the stuff you're doing. You might be doing a little bit more advanced stuff than what we usually cover, but we'll definitely tackle it. So one way you can deal with this is start punching in numbers for X and figure out what this is and what that is, right? So let's do this here. We'll graph them as we go along, right? I'll try to write a little smaller so everything fits in. <coughs> One of the first places you can start is x is equal to zero. So let's plug in x is equal to zero. And what does this become? Zero to the power of zero. 
that's anything to the power of zero is one so this should be one right i believe that's one i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna make sure we're doing this uh correct so let's do i'm gonna go to um god what's that math set called i haven't been there for a while where's my math stuff mm, da, da, da. wolf ram let's go to wolf ram alpha wolf ram alpha okay this is a website i use for a lot of things that i'm trying to figure out here let me post the link for you guys <laughs> Wolfram Alpha, Nikki, how are you doing? How's life? Right. So you can just go zero to the power of zero. Oh, this doesn't work, does it? No, it's one. The limit is one, and then oh, there's another limit that's zero. X to the positive. Interesting interesting dealing with zeros is a definitely interesting deal but anything to the power of zero should be one so that should be one sometimes it's wacko with zero when you're dealing with it let's try this zero to the power of zero oops zero to the power of zero i don't have a fancy calculator yeah it's one right for some reason i start questioning myself crazy so well, no formal education, I should say. My background is self-taught, and no worries. I haven't taken a math class in years. Oh, wow, you haven't. Okay, I'm open to anything I can hear from you. Okay, awesome. So zero to the power of zero is one. Over here, we're going to have zero to the cube root of zero, which is just zero. So that's going to be one as well. So if we're going to graph this, here, let's create a graph here. How far can we go down? Let's go down to here the odds are we're going to punch in more numbers okay so when x is zero both f of one and f of two are zero so are, are one right so we're here okay if we call that one let's plug in one so this is going to be one to the power of one which is one so when x is one this is one and that's going to be one to the power of cube root of one which is one Doop. so they're both in the same place again right let's do because this is a cube root should we do should we do eight let's do because eight is going to be crazy for this because this thing just explodes as a function like it just goes crazy right if we go two, let's just do the two here for this this is going to be two to the power of two, which is four. Okay. So when X is two, this guy becomes four. So that's one, two, three, four, right? So that's F of one, right? This guy is going to be two to the power of cube root of two. Now the cube root of two is a little bit over one. So this is going to be a little bit over one, right? Let's punch it in. Let's get an exact number for this. Two to the power of. Oh, hold on! I can just do it here. What am I doing? Here's a calculator. Two to the power of. Cube root of two. Is that? Oh, that didn't work. How does this calculator work? Hold on! I gotta figure out this calculator. Hold on! Clear, 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 clear. Dot, 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 cube root of no that's not the way you do it clear clear eight doing three okay that's how you do it okay cool so two to the power of hold on clear 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 two to oops two to the power of three cube root of two oh that's not working how come Okay, let's do this the long way. Cube root of two. Uh, three boing. Oh, that's the other way around. Two boing three. 
Nice. 1.25, 1.26. 2 to the power of 1.26. 2 to the power of 1.26, which is going to be 2 something. 2.4. So this becomes 2.4. Alright? So for f of 1, should we do this in different colors? Let's call this purple. Okay. So that's going to be 2.4. So it's here. Okay. Let me bring out the chat just in case I'm missing anything. Doop. Not relevant to the stream, but I bought some absolute today. I'm gonna try your recipe, bro. Nice, nice. What are you gonna mix with it? What's the uh, what fruits? If it's fruits, right? Let's do three. You'll see how fast this thing explodes. If we do three, this is three cubed. Three cubed is twenty-seven. So we're at three, two, one, and now we're at 27. So if that's four, 27 is like way up here, right? This one would be three cube root of three. Cube root of three, I got blueberry from the area. Nice. Blueberry is really good. Blueberry might need a little bit more sugar. That's what I, my take was on it. So three cube root of three Doink. so that's 1.44 so 2 to the power of 1.44 2.71 so this thing this guy goes like this and this guy goes 2.71 so this guy's here like this thing's so this graph looks like it's increasing very slowly if we do a little jump right so let's jump this guy Yeah, as long as you like it sweet, Nikki, right? Let's do a jump on this. Eight. Eight to the power of eight is enormous. We're not even going to bother. Like it's gone, right? This one is going to be eight to the power of cube root of eight. Cube root of eight is two. So this is going to be eight squared, which is going to be 64, right? So this guy, when it's eight, let's do this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? 8 to the power of 8 is ginormous, really. What is the number? 8 to the power of 8. 8 to the power of 8 is, what is that? 16,777,216, right? Like, where is that? <laughs> it's huge, right? But this guy's 64. So what's going on here on this side of the graph? This guy is growing exponentially and it is it's an exponential growth like this well 64 would be higher my bad let's do this at least make it semi-proportional right. so this guy goes like this this guy is going like it's just vertical basically if you want to think about it right now those are the positive values that's on that side of the graph if we do the negative values doink, 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 right so if you plug in negative one here it's going to be negative one to the power of negative one okay and it's going to be in brackets all of these negative two negative three negative four i hope uh, you i know it's not clear it's really messy but i hope you know what i'm doing because if you plug in basically what we're doing here, here, let's do this one. We're doing f of negative 3. So you're going to plug in negative 3 to the power of negative 3, right? Negative 3 to the power of negative 3. Negative power kicks it down. So this becomes 1 over negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed is 1 over negative 27, which is negative 27. So if we do this... This thing is going to look crazy, wacko. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So if you plug in negative 1, it's negative 1 to the power of negative 1. I finally caught another stream. Philly16, how you doing? You caught a stream where I'm struggling to be able to graph something, right? Because <laughs> we're trying to do it manually. I'm not going to, we can't use calculus for this. I'm sorry. I, I don't know my calculus well enough to be able to do this one right and we're not dealing with calculus so we're going to do with a table of values right so negative one to the power of negative one is going to be 
negative one over negative one, which is just negative one. So when it's negative one, it's negative one. When it's negative two to the power of negative two, negative eight, ne let me do it here instead of trying to explain it. F of negative two is going to be negative two to the power of negative two, which is going to be one over negative two squared, which is going to be one over four. So this guy actually oscillates between which is going to be a very cool graph actually this thing is going to look like this it's going to go i'm not sure what's going to do when it's between zero and negative one if this is going to be negative a half da -da 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 -da, it's going to be square root so we're going to do a little question mark here because i'm not really concerned about that this thing is going to go like this and the odds are that's what it's going to look like let's assume it's going to come down and it's going to go like this to find x intercept zero, substitute swap the size of the equation, raise both sides of the equation to the power of three. Raise both sides of the equation to the power of three. Yeah, you could do that. You could do this. Plug in numbers for the y. If I, I read that correctly, divide both sides of the equation by eight. Da, 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 da. Oh, we're talking about this, yeah. Uh, when the product of the factor is equal to zero, at least one factor is zero. Solve the equation for x, and the final solution is that do a key. Okay. I, I'm going to show you how to look at this in a different way algebraically as well, right? Uh, where were we? That's going to look like that. This guy is going to be negative one to the power of, and all the negative roots are negative, right? And these guys are going to be negative, negative. So this guy, what is that guy going to look like? If it's going to be that negative, it's going to kick it down. I think this guy as well is going to look like this, but it's going to be less pronounced, possibly. That's my guess. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to punch this in. Let's see if we're at, at least close to what these graphs look like. And then we're going to tackle this guy, the main guy, right? So I'm going to punch this equation in into Wolfram alpha. So y is equal to x to the power of x. I haven't graphed one of these forever. <laughs> look at this guy. The, oh, this graph doesn't look great. What a better graph. So here, take a look at this. I'm gonna provide it in the chat. I like doing these things. I'm in grade 12 and math is my favorite subject. Nice. I love watching your math videos, but this is the first I've won first live one I've been. Oh, really? I, I hope you're enjoying this. We're doing something right now, which we're trying to figure out what this looks like. So we graphed. That's the graph of this guy and it doesn't do a great job. OK, it doesn't do a great job of graphing this. Let's see if we can do a search that gives us the details here. Um, actually, we need the calculator. Let's do this graph. And technology is your friend, right? Let's see. Is this going to work? No, this is just graphing lines when I'm doing a search. Unfortunately, I don't have a better uh, graphing software because I'm not really graphing very intricate stuff graph let's see yeah this thing's doing the same thing so it's coming down and you know what this thing's telling me it's undefined why would it be undefined for negative x's negative hmm i shouldn't be undefined why would it be undefined goes through one. Oh yeah, this kicks down. This graph here, we didn't do it from one. From, oh yeah, this guy should have been here. Yeah, 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 that's right. This guy, I forgot to point, connect it up with this guy. My bad, because we put the one there, right? This guy goes like this. Why doesn't it graph anything that's negative x? Negative x to the power of negative two to the power. For some reason, the graphs I'm graphing right now don't uh provide anything for the negative x's here i'll provide you this link as well which i find weird chicho 
you're going to need a bigger board. <laughs> I, I will. At some point, we're going to do an upgrade. Seriously, Thago, at some point, we're going to do an upgrade for this, right? We'll kick it up in our next upgrade when we do get funds together, buy brand new system, big board, and all that jazz, right? For now, we're having a good time. We're learning a lot. Sorry about the gigantic link, but if you click on it, it'll show you a graph through Google, okay? Would you like the app that I'm using? For sure, Taco, send me a, uh, can you post the link? I don't think you can post the link. If you post it on Discord, I could probably go there and grab it right now. Or give me the name of it and I'll, I'll look it up, All right? Because I'm not, like literally, I'm not using any graphing software or anything to do these things, okay? Let's look at this guy. Actually, let's use Wolfram Alpha to graph this guy. See if we can do it. This is going to be Y equals 2 to the power of X. Sorry, 2 times X to the power of uh, bracket. Da, 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 da. I'm going to use brackets here. Bracket. And I want Q root. How do we do Q root of this? Actually, I'm going to go to the power of a third. So I could write this when I'm writing it into the program. 32x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3. Power of 1 over 3 is the same thing as a Q root, right? So it's going to be 32x plus 1. Oh, sorry, plus 3. Close the bracket to the power of uh, 1 over 3. Bracket 1 divided by three brackets are your friend Boop. let's see what this looks like yeah it looks about the same but it just explodes even more here's uh unfortunately it doesn't give you too detailed photo math we learning linear algebra this is uh, this is functions i wouldn't call this linear algebra this is uh this is definitely dealing with hardcore functions. And you know what? I'm going to see if Google does a better job graphing this. Boop. Boop. Let's see. Do we get a graph out of this? Yeah, this thing looks about the same. Why is Y undefined for X negative numbers? It shouldn't be undefined. So I'm not sure why it's giving us undefined. Maybe it's doesn't behave as a function so it can't graph it right so here's a graph on google usually i use duckduckgo but i don't think duckduckgo's graphing abilities are are that good let's try duckduckgo maybe duckduckgo is better oops i don't want that i want the function itself and then i'm gonna look on uh, the graphing app oh is it gonna no it doesn't do it no it doesn't do it that that go unfortunately doesn't have that app available or it doesn't have it's not as intense a program as that when you have the time sheet show would you mind recommending where to start if one would like to learn from the bottom up on your asmr math list on youtube i got a very uh spread out education on math and I would like to focus focus a bit. Sorry if I'm not asking a very clear question. Nikki, uh, here, let me, here's a link to one of the videos, Chicho equal sign. Take a look at this one. Start off with this. This is pretty basic, right? Uh, basically, it's about solving equations, right? what it means to move around an equal sign. If this is too basic for you, let me know, I'll kick it up a notch. If this is a little bit too much, let me know, we'll kick it down a notch, right? But basically, when it comes to algebra, you need to know how to use uh, our operations, plus, minus, multiplication, division, right? Once you learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you need to know how to move around an equal sign ridiculously important okay do you know of any other good articles on julian assange that uh than the one by uh, yeah for sure i do olive um you know what here let me do this for you olive note let me open up my notepad 
uh, open, 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 open. Hopefully, there we go. Here, read the. Uh, John Pilger, you know what, Olive? I'm going to give you the Duran. Okay, I'm going to give you this. Here's one. This is Paul Craig Roberts. He has a sort of a unique take on it. Here's the Duran. Okay. Uh, here's medium. Here's the torture one that we're going to read most likely. This, this one's pretty important. This third one that I'm linking to you. We're going to read this one most likely this weekend. Okay. Granting Julian Assange political asylum. Here's a interview with uh an ecuadorian uh political person that was uh talks about why julian assange was given up okay here is the one regarding uh how a trial in spain where uh, it came out that the company that was doing the security for the Ecuadorian embassy gave access to the CIA so CIA could uh, be watching Julian Assange 24 hours a day including his interviews with the lawyers and stuff like this so right off the bat the cases should be dismissed right and here's something from John Pilger apologies if uh, I'm sort of overriding what's going on with Julian Assange from the mathematics but what's going on with Julian Assange what's going on with Julian Assange is ridiculously important, right? Extremely important. Okay. They know everything before they even act 100% uh, sticks, right? Thanks for popping by, by the way. Um, where were we? So we're here. Da, 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 da. So we did all this. So this is what we're getting. For some reason, the graphs that I'm seeing on Wolfram Alpha and Google and whatnot, automatic graphing it tells us that there's the function doesn't exist on this side i'm not sure why let's take this guy our original function and rewrite it okay and that's one thing you can do you can rewrite equations and it gives you a better perspective of how they're playing out right so this is exponential functions they're like huge they grow ridiculous it's exponential too like it's just enormous, right? There's actually a special word for these. I forget. It's more than just an exponential function. It's a, um, it's exponential, but it's there's a special word for these types of functions, and I forget what what that word is. Okay, let me do this. So, let's assume we have this function, and whenever you're given a function, what you really want to do is figure out how this function behaves great thanks gonna read it all i really want to know more about uh, this after yesterday's stream all of uh, i'm glad that you're seeking out additional information and read these articles and do additional searches online and stuff like don't take everything that i'm linking as absolute but these are phenomenal articles like literally tells you what's going on and what we've covered so far in the last two streams that was a great intro to what's been happening to Julian Assange and what WikiLeaks is about and, and all that jazz. Their power functions, is that what it is? Uh, Nicholas, awesome. Thank you very much for that. So power functions, right? So what you can do with this is, because this looks complicated and, and we got a root radical in there, you can flip this thing around. F of X is really Y, right? So what you can do is rewrite this as Y. Okay, why? Okay, the next thing you can do is you can divide by two. So what we want to do is get rid of this radical, right? So we're going to divide by two, divide by two. I think this should work. So right now you got y over two is equal to x cube root of 32x plus three. And then what we're going to do, we're going to cube this side and we're going to cube this side to the power of three to the power of three 
This becomes y cubed over 8 is equal to this side, this guy here, cube root of 32x plus 3. Cube root of 32x is 32x plus 3 to the power of 1 third, right? So if we cube this whole thing, top notch, awesome. So if you cube this whole thing, this kills this. So all of a sudden on this side, we got x, 32x plus 3. Now, does that help us out? Not really, but it gets rid of the cube root symbol, right? So it looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit, maybe a little bit more complicated, right? And you can do different things to this in this format, and you can do different things to it in that format. The odds are, and it's not the odds are, you absolutely need calculus to be able to graph this properly. Okay. My younger brother is a math tutor while he's at school. Do you ever teach on how to teach math better or just teach math? Uh, legendary Bob, Rob Boss. Okay. I've just started creating videos like my videos when I make them, when I'm teaching mathematics, I'm really sharing how I end up teaching math, right? But I'm starting to create content on how to teach mathematics. And as far as the first module really that we're gonna put out on in regards to mathematics, okay, the odds are it's gonna be this set of videos plus what follows this so let me give you the links for this let me tell you what these are the first one is uh, and we loaded these up in the last month the first one is how to teach counting the second one is how to teach adding the third one is how to teach multiplication okay so here is the first video how to teach counting which is basically um gearing these videos towards people parents educators teachers tutors that want to teach mathematics okay now if you look at our youtube channel here's the how to teach multiplication i'll just link up these three and there's a video and this was all done in one session i sat down and just did this whole thing right here's the next one here's the how to teach adding okay and here's how to teach multiplying okay these are phenomenal videos really i'm basically sharing my technique how i go about teaching mathematics based on my experience from the last 20 years of how to teach math with my students and what i'm doing right now is we're going to build this up from the basics all the way up to wherever we get to right so these ones are just dealing with adding counting and multiplying and i'm going to follow this up with subtraction and division right and then we're going to go into what i linked up for all of which is how to move around an equal sign and here is the video so the previous three links that i gave you i broke up this last link that i gave you it was just sitting down in one session for two hours and going through the process of how I do it. I broke it up into segments. And there is a fair bit of additional material that is gonna follow this, which is basically exercises of what I, the specific type of questions I give my students. We're gonna go through some of them and stuff. I'm gonna build, add, subtraction, division, and moving around, moving around an equal science to this, right? And then put this out as one full module. Uh, so I'm basically starting to create uh, videos content on how to teach because I can't you know one person can only do so much I think what's needed out there now is uh, help for teachers that uh, want to learn how to teach mathematics because our current education system is horrendous in that regard okay so let me know if your brother uh, sees these videos if you show it to him let me know if he ends up liking it or not most problem with teachers is not their knowledge it's their ability to actually teach it sticks uh, sticks are 100 percent 
because this is basic stuff, but a lot of teachers are overwhelmed with our current education system and they don't have the time. If they have a class of 30 people, 30 kids in class, you can't, it's very difficult. The teacher has to work extremely over time and really be focused uh, to be able to meet the needs of all 30 students because certain people have hiccups in certain concepts in different locations and i talk about this in these videos okay i wish i could have had chicho teaching me math back in school though i've learned more over time awesome yeah dante how you doing brother folding origami cranes drinking red wine and watching a chicho math stream doesn't get much better than that awesome olive by the way olive there's an amazing documentary on origami that I've watched and it's sort of math related. Uh, I forget what the name is. Uh, it's a fantastic documentary on origami. Uh, well worth watching, well worth watching. Some teachers have about uh, 20 to 30 students and they, and then they have about four to five classes. Yeah, sticks are on it. That's the reason why I tell people when they tell me, oh, do I teach in an institution? There's no way I would survive in an institution because I need to be able to interact with my students. I need to be able to make sure that I'm not cutting corners, right? To teach them what they need to learn. And in an institution, as, a, as someone who works with students, if I was teaching 20 to 30 kids per class with four to five classes per day, I would burn out in a month. Impossible impossible to make sure each student is keeping up 100 percent not banned yet <laughs> void no <laughs> thank god <laughs> that's good i really didn't want to start another that uh, twitch channel right i i don't want to get knocked off these platforms hey chicho odd make how are you doing odd make you will know this awesome thank you for popping in how do we graph this i'm gonna erase this could be this one folding a new tomorrow origami meets math and science i don't i don't think that was a name it was something more simple than that chicho living on the edge, chicho living on the edge. <laughs> take a look at this on me how do we graph this we need calculus to graph this don't we how do we graph this that's my first question to odd and odd she's she knows her mathematics extremely well. I wish Otmik, you were here beside me. <laughs> Showing me how to do this, right? How do you graph this? On a more general note, graphing this, x to the power of x, when I punched it into Wolfram Alpha or Google or whatnot, it's telling me the graph looks like this, right? Here's one. Now we generated this part. We generated this part of the graph, which shoots up, but then it says there's no solution for negative x's. Why is there no solution for negative x's? I think the uh, the graphing calc uh, programs are wrong. Um, where did I watch it? <laughs> Pirate Bay is your friend. <laughs> I feel, hold on. You know what? Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, what was the name of that program you're using? Uh, photo math nice taco photo math let me type in photo math in my browser so i don't forget this origami documentary or gummy documentary between the folds is that the one you said between the folds might be between the folds is that what you said it was da, 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 da. well x is undefined for negative values of the real no number line because you need complex numbers why would you need complex numbers I think? f of 
negative 1 is going to be negative 1 to the power of negative 1, wouldn't it? Which is just negative 1. Am I missing something? So f of negative 2 would be negative 2 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 over negative 2 squared, which is 1 over 4, right? So it jumps from negative to positive. That's what I was going to... I was under the assumption it's going to look something like this. And it just comes down. Like you're going to have square square roots of negative numbers and the square root of negative 1 is i. Why? Oh, because I'm an idiot. That's why. <laughs> because, <laughs> of course, what am I thinking? Because you could have, I just went with the uh, integers, right? So with the integers, you, you can get the points. But if you have f of negative a half, this would be negative a half to the power of negative a half, which would be one over negative a half to the power of a half, which would be one over a half square root, square root of a negative number. So yeah, for sure. Sometimes when you don't see something, all you need is someone just to point out just the simple thing that you overlook, which is square roots for me, right? For some reason, I created a table of values. We're just going with the integers, right? I totally forgot. What the hell? This is negative one. But there's rational numbers there, right? It's undefined from zero to negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Or any other or any non integer negative. Yeah. Yeah. So between the numbers. <laughs> what I ended up doing just looked at the integers, right? <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. But how do you graph this guy? Thanks for that, by the way. Le uh, later, Negretto. Uh, later, Ali Negretto. Later, Ali Negretto. Or any non negative. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for that. I just need another math person to tell me this. I struggle to count to 100. This is blowing my mind. Chicho, do you think maths are important for an entrepreneur in a world dominated by uh, corrupt billionaires? 100% evergreen. The reason the world is dominated by corrupt billionaires is because the general population is not literate in the language of mathematics. To me, that's the first step. That's the reason I'm here. As best as I can to teach you guys mathematics, high school mathematics, right? And I make ridiculous mistakes along the way, right? Can you take this? Uh, can you take this in English? Can you take this in English? I don't know what the uh, sticks are on it. I don't know uh, what that means. So, okay, so that's undefined. So Chicho was wrong and the two websites, Google and Wolfram, <laughs> were right. Oh, and I thought we had something there, right? So take a look at this. So Admic, how would we graph this? What's the best way to do this? Or anyone else for that matter? It's another language for him. Cat blocks. Oop. Yeah, ma mathematics is the language that rules our world right now. So if everyone was literate in the language of mathematics, then corporations, corrupt billionaires, corrupt politicians would not rule over us i don't see why you would need calculus for the first one for this one how would we go about graphing this just table of values that's that's difficult right you can graph it just with a lot of pain sweat yeah i don't want to put the pain sweat and tears in there like we could do table of values for sure x and f of x but man oof that's a lot of work, right? Was just making a dumb joke, as always. Some people don't speak the la language of math. That's why I said, if you, if you could take it, uh, in any, oh, okay, yeah, and it is a language, right? Yeah. So I guess just blood, sweat, and tears for this one. You just do 
punch in numbers, right? Zero, zero to the power of whatever is just going to be, um, it's just going to be zero, right? Because it's going to be two times zero to the power of cube root of zero plus three, which is going to be zero to the power of cube root of three. Zero times zero is just zero, right? And then you continue one, two, three. Fun fact, when I count to 100, I tend to skip 22, 20, 33, 44, every goddamn time. Very annoying. Olive, everybody, when they're learning counting, when they're learning adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, has hiccups in different places. I've had students where they don't skip the 22, 33, 44, and whatnot. They skip 15, right? 14, 16, 17, 18, right? They skip 15. They skip, they go from 28 to 30. They skip the nines. They skip the 29, they skip the 39 and whatnot, right? It's because you take breath, Void. <laughs> nice functions you got there. Thanks, Stan, man. Well, uh, well, usually when I come to something uh, gigantic and painful, I almost always just use the internet. Yeah, that's what we started doing, Admic. I was trying to do a table of values, but what I ended up doing was sticking with the integers, which the integers worked. It's the roots that didn't work, which that was my my brain fart kicking in. So I forgot who asked this question. I think it was Taco. Taco, uh, use <laughs> the program. And what was this program? Photo math. Let's go to photo math. Photo math. Scan, love, learn math superpowers for every student i've never used this looks cool though is it free software free app solving steps download yeah it looks like it's just an app i'm gonna add this to my math folder hey math math where's my straight up math folder uh, oh it's on the other computer that's where i do most of my math I'm just going to pin this and add it on later. Okay. Fun. I mean, you can probably use calculus to find the minimums and maximum maximums, but that's probably going to be very painful as well. Yeah. That was my, my take on it as well. So I was like, Oh God, that's why I went with X to the power of X. I even got that one wrong. Right. Oh yeah. I've uh, been skipping some, nines as well in my time stupid nines stupid nines <laughs> nine is my favorite number also lucky number is nine lucky number for you good good wish i took strong math classes it's how we can uh we call them in quebec i just took soft math really is that what you call them void strong math strong math like i don't uh prefer number 37 I like 37 nice prime numbers prime numbers are sweet I for me I just I just like numbers I used to I think I used to have uh, six is a six is a favorite number of mine I like six six is a good number right six you can't go wrong with six and then six and then six got to get nice to see you again got to check in on um on the linky shirt awesome nikki i hope uh you check some of them out thanks for popping in by the way seven seven is, is go for me trinity four is always good for me 21 and 22 two three six nine etc for me on the roulette table when i used to play roulette i like 29 and 32 and the neighbors right so 32 check this out this is this is how ridiculous it is right on a roulette table you got 32 you got 17 beside it and you got 20 on this side and i believe you have 5 and 10 on this side on 29 you got you got you got what do you got you got 12 and uh is it 12 29 17 there's 29 12 oh good 
I forgot him. 12. Oh, I forget what the next numbers are. Good. That means I haven't played it for a long time. Where did that expression you were working on come from? Uh, someone asked it uh, later. Someone asked what it was, you know, how we go about graphing and we try it you know different means but basically table of values is what we're using uh, something about 28 no idea why oh boy here we go into the gambling <laughs> other thing too you can graph so from obmic other thing too you can graph a general form just pretend that the exponent with 32x is n yeah uh, it tends to infinity and always increasing from positive numbers so graph 2x to the power of n instead which may be somewhat more manageable but it wouldn't be right only an approximation yeah which is where i was going with that odmic by the way right so for example if someone you know if you want to graph something like this uh here if you want to graph something like this let's just say uh plus two squared plus uh, i don't know three right so if you want to graph something like this, graph the general function for this, which is y is equal to x squared, right? So y is equal to x squared goes like this. And then this and this do things to this. So they translate it, right? If we put a number in front, it kicks it up, right? So here, let's put a number in front. I'll show you guys how this works. Which is why one of the reasons why I wanted to graph y is equal to x to the power of x, but we mucked that up. But our graph on the right side was a good approximation of what that looked like, right? So y is equal to negative 2, right? So the way you would graph this, start off with this guy, create your table of values for this. Let me show you guys this. This is pretty important. This is what I teach my students in, in grade 12 when they're dealing with this, right? I remember zero about my high school and university education. That's what happens when you learn stuff uh, you care about. I love primes. Gambling math is the best math. <laughs> so take a look at this. Let's create a table of values for this. Y is equal to x squared, right? Oops, let me, I don't want to write it there. I want to write it here. So we're going to put values in for x and we're going to solve for y, right? So if you put values in for x for this function first, right? Let's start off with negative 2. When x is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. When x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. That's really all you need right now. Okay? And then what you're going to do to graph this is do what's being done to this function because this is your base function, what you're starting off with, your template right this number here multiplies the y's by negative 2 so first order of business multiply everything by negative 2 so this becomes negative 8 negative 2 0 uh, da, 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 uh, negative 2 <laughs> negative 8 okay so what this guy really did was flip this graph on the x-axis and stretch it vertically right so right now, just by doing this, so y is equal to negative 2x squared. That's what that guy is. What we've done is we've flipped the original graph and stretched it. Okay. And then what you do, you do this and this. This guy affects the x. It's the opposite of addition. So you subtract 2 from the x. So this becomes minus 2. So it moves it this way too. Okay. So this becomes negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, um, negative 1, and 0. Okay. So right now our graph is here. This guy adds 3 to the, to the y's. So you're going to add plus 3. So it's going to be negative 5, 1, 3, 1, um, negative 5. Okay. So if we're going to graph this guy, let's do this in this color, right? In purple. All you need, the points that you have now, is negative 4 and negative 5. So you go to 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Okay. You got negative 3 and 1. So negative 3 and 1. You got 2 and 3, right? It's just coordinates points here, right? What you have is negative 4 and negative 5, negative 3 and 1, negative 2 and 3. Those are the points that we're graphing. Okay. Math is all about logic. Uh, I fucking love it. <laughs> nice. By the way, Chicho, I think it would take you a hot minute at the most to learn calculus. You basically already have the fu fundamentals now. Yeah, Admic, and I took second second year calculus and applied mathematics with multiple multiple differential equations and stuff like this, right? And integration, multi integrations and stuff. I, I've taken that at university. I got my math minor. It's just I haven't used it forever. So um, I would have to relearn everything. The one thing with calculus is it's not just me relearning it. People have been asking me to teach it. For me to be able to teach it, I really need to know it really well, right? I'm not comfortable just teaching things that I don't really have a good appreciation for, right? So that's, the, that's my hesitation. And tell you the truth, I don't have a hot minute right now. I'm full on. Like I'm full blast right now, operating at max capacity, right? Uh, not just on the math front, but because of what's going on geopolitically. Uh, but as soon as I find myself free up a little hot minute, I'm going to delve into uh, calculus. And it'll take me, uh, for me, my estimation, I just have to dive into it for a month or two months and do it every day for a little bit of time to get myself back up. And then I can start teaching calculus. Thanks for the uh what do you call it uh encouragement and the trust that my math is strong enough to be able to kick it up to that level right negative two and three negative two and three negative one and one negative one and one so what you can notice with this is this right this was zero zero that's a parabola that's our vertex so this becomes our vertex so as soon as you hit your vertex, the graph comes down again, it becomes symmetrical, zero and negative five. So this is what the graph of this guy is, and we derived it from the graph of this guy, right? That's what you have to keep in mind whenever you're graphing functions, right? Think about what the base function looks like, and you build on top of that, right? which makes life so much easier, ridiculously easier. Okay, that's how I go about graphing most functions. Look at the base function, build on top of that. No matter what the function is, they've manipulated it, transformed it, stretched it, flipped it, did whatever to it. If you know what the base values are, all you do is just expand on it. Do what's being done to the, to the function in table format and you got your graph and by the way in my part of the world what they teach in school they don't teach kids how to do it this way i don't know why i teach all of my students how to teach functions in this manner okay they need to find the x values the y uh, the, the x intercepts the y intercepts and all that jazz right but for some reason this is not the way they teach in my part of the world uh grade 11 and grade 12 students how to graph functions they teach them wacko systems how to do it and the kids really find it difficult i find this the easiest way to graph functions right and just to give you the base functions that we have here let me take this down here let's draw some of the base functions that most of the functions you're going to encounter in high school are based on, right? Take a look at this. Y is equal to X. That's just an equation of a line, right? Y is equal to X squared. That's a parabola. Y is equal to X cubed. That's a cubic function. Oops, goes through zero, right? Y is equal to square root of X looks like that um, y is equal to log of x uh, what else we got y is equal to absolute value of x 
Right? Here's six base functions. Then you can start manipulating these. Right? You could do this here. Y is equal to absolute value of X plus two plus three. What's being done to the X is the opposite of what, what the equation states. Okay. So what you do is you go, you move two this way, three up. So one, two, one, two, three. So this guy is now here and the graph looks like this. Okay. You log graphs. Y is equal to log X plus two plus three. This goes through one. So you move left one, one, two, and up three, one, two, three. Okay, that's what that function looks like, and etc. Okay, learn your base functions. Learn what the table of values are for them, and all you do is just manipulate them based on what the functions are. This might be. Uh, I'm getting PTSD from this. <laughs> Having flashes of my high school crush. Are you your high school crush? Your high school crush is not bad if you had a good crush on someone and they like you too. Right? Big C. That's funny. High school crush. This might be a bit early uh, early into the stream to ask for, but when is the next stream? You briefly alluded to a possible political stream in the near future. Any specific date? Yeah, I'll have, uh, I'm going to sort myself out, uh, figure out my schedule. The odds are we're going to do uh, Julian Assange stream most likely on Saturday. I don't know what the time, um, Saturday or Sunday. I might try to slip in another stream. I might try to do two this weekend, um, but I'm not so sure if I can get to it. I actually want to edit a couple of videos that it, we already shot, the liqueur videos, how to make liqueur. I have a couple of videos just sitting there. It's been a, over, one of them is almost, it was in the summer that I shot my system crashing. I didn't get a chance to edit it. I'd like to edit that and load it up. And the other one is like a couple of months ago, uh, the Cornini and Cherry liqueur <laughs> that I've shot that I haven't edited. And we have backlog of three videos that I need to load up on BitChute and YouTube that uh, um, we already did the live streams for that I haven't loaded up yet. I'm feeling feeling like I'm back at school learning, but actually understand some parts of this awesome cyber fan. Really, if you're the the thing you have to understand about mathematics and your most people's feelings about mathematics that they consider mathematics to be hard or they consider, um, you know, they they don't like mathematics or they they consider mathematics to be obscure and hocus pocus and stuff like this the system messed you up the system lied to you okay our centralized education system what it did and it was intentional as far as i'm concerned it made most people in the western world anyway hate mathematics okay and by doing that they disarmed people they made people into slaves okay if one of the first things I tell my students, if they want to be a free human being, to govern their own lives, to be able to improve their lives, to be able to do whatever they want in this world, the first thing I tell them is learn your natural languages, your natural language well, and learn mathematics well. You, if you know your natural language well, and you know mathematics well you are a free human being start using the logic that you've learned the power that you have start reading learning educating yourself into whatever discipline about whatever discipline you want to learn i personally hated math until i was like 17. yeah odd make you'd be amazed how many people i know that hate math and then when i start working with them and they learn some of the basics they're like oh wow this is great and, this, and then they go, wow, this is easy, right? That's the brilliant factor of mathematics. 
I love the YouTube clips when people go out on the streets and ask easy questions to random people and they can't uh, answer the shows you want the public uh, shows what the public school is teaching you which is it, it isn't teaching you right they don't know the answer yet cyber um, uh, so merely human merely human he went out what are you doing uh, the cyber fan the teacher has a great impact on how math or any other education is discovered and held by individuals poorly equipped teachers are not able to share important but simple uh, visions that allow people uh, higher understanding they are restricted by the institution itself often but then fall into the acceptance of it note uh, I do not want to appear it is, it is all the teachers but it is really impacts uh, learning it really does and teachers get burnt out really the burnout rate for teachers is insane uh, and that's by design that's by design thank you for the follows thank you for the subs uh, for those of you who have been following and subbing by the way uh, twitch prime sub or subbing or whatever it is okay there's a famous mathematician named David Hilbert when one of his graduate students left math to become a poet Hilbert said you know for a mathematician he did not have enough imagination but he has become a poet and now he is fine oh let me read that again so quote you know for a mathematician he did not have enough imagination but he has become a poet and now he is fine ah so poetry gave him the imagination that he needed and mathematics once you start meditating on mathematics it literally just opens up the world to you okay people not understanding how creative and natural a subject mathematics really shows how horrible the perception of math really is yeah Odmek, i agree with you 100 percent it i don't know well i know how they do it they they make people human beings uh, become monkeys and they don't explain why certain things are the way they are which is a natural question every human being has the one word that you will hear a child growing up more than any other word is why 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 when you get to school teachers aren't equipped well enough the system hasn't developed or it's been designed in a way to take that inquisitive nature of kids and crush it okay so it's horrendous it, it really is horrendous uh, hey bro hey lemons hey bro i need to leave been in here for a while and it was an interesting chat uh, thanks for sticking around and thank you for the follow i saw your little thing pop up uh thanks for hanging around we try to make it uh fun make math fun again make math fun again make math real again make math important again explain to people what mathematics is nah hilbert was uh dissing his former grad student by saying he wasn't creative enough to be a mathematician that poetry is less creative oh is that what he was saying what an a-hole right <laughs> thank you for the follow poison socks what a what a really what an a-hole i thought he was i took it in a positive light i try to take things in a positive light by the way Admic. i think that's why i have when i'm doing mathematics i have a lot of patience the why i can relate to they always ask i always asked my teacher why do i need this yeah and i've had students ask me this and look when i started teaching mathematics i really didn't know math as well as i do now right i thought i knew math i knew more mathematics back then i knew more calculus i was teaching a little bit of calculus 20 years ago and i was teaching hardcore stats and conics and stuff like this i knew the mathematics but i didn't know the whys the reason i teach the way i do is because i would have students ask me why and i wouldn't know why 
like literally I wouldn't know why and I'll go oh, that's a good question and it would ask me why for the most simple math concepts so I would read up on it and sometimes the why just a simple concept would take me a couple of days to figure out why right and then I would teach my students and they would go wow and then I would see them start to love mathematics so I put in a lot of time at the beginning stages I front and loaded my work I put in a lot of time at the beginning life of my teaching mathematics to seek out the answers why right my request for the next room in the sun stream to start around the time this stream started I believe I was asleep when you went online with that first stream discussing him but totally um, understand if that scheduling proves difficult for you so we start this thing at 1 30 if we started this thing at 1 30 I can't do it at 1 30 on Saturday um, how does earlier sound olive let me know uh, I have to be somewhere I have a student that I have to work with on Saturday from 1 till 3 so how about uh, how about we do a Julian Assange stream 12 30 11 30 10 30 how about we do a Julian Assange stream from 10 30 a.m. my time Pacific time this one started at 1 30 p.m. right so kick it back 12 30 11 30 10 30 uh, 10 30 to 12 30 so how about we start the stream on Saturday at 10 o'clock three and a half hours before this stream started will that work for you you're I'm in Canada West Coast Canada's large is four and a half hours time zone right so check it out do a search how how would 10 a.m. PDT Pacific Daylight Savings times three and a half hours before the stream we started today work for you if that works for you will set in stone I'll have to check my schedule but I'll announce it most likely tomorrow okay let me know Olive if they didn't give me a good answer they could go and teach the wall <laughs> something is that because I wasn't listening you're a hard ass <laughs> the sticks you're a hard ass uh, matcha and there is the fact that just knowing math allows you to think better it's like lifting weights 100% odd mix. what I tell my students is max math makes you smarter I don't tell them that if you learn anything it makes you smarter <laughs> because teeny high school kids being high school kids they take everything as absolutes right <laughs> the link is sometimes the link is there to other things but what I try to tell them is you want to get smarter learn mathematics I have students I have had students and have students that say they just want to make money I say you want to become rich learn mathematics what are you wasting your time doing anything else right if money is you money is what you're chasing learn math if love is what you're chasing learn math because being intelligent makes you sexy right makes you attractive to whoever you want to be attracted to right I've rarely met anyone in my life that that is attracted to stupid people most people that I know are attracted to intelligent people or get money and hire someone who can do who, who can math <laughs> knows math well it there's a lot of stories sticks there's a lot of stories of people who have had a lot of money they've hired consultants accountants business managers to manage their money and they get ripped off because they didn't know the mathematics involved with them right look at Wall Street it's full of scam artists right from Madoff to Federal Reserve and the Securities Exchange Commission and all the hedge funds and whatnot they're all just manipulating doing hocus-pocus mathematics and people are not wise enough to catch their lies right look for example I'll give you guys an example uh, Bernie Madoff uh, I think his name first name was Madoff but Madoff in the mid 2000s building up to the financial scam right 
was a hedge fund manager or a, or a money manager in Wall Street that was running a Ponzi scheme for 20 years, right? He burned people for like $50 billion, right? And the whole, the whole house of cars came crashing down, um, I think in like 2007 or 2008, 2006, somewhere around there, mid to late 2000s, right? They brought, they had a court case, right? It was $50 billion. And the reason this hit everybody's radar is because a lot of rich people got burned. He wasn't burning poor people, right? Because if he was burning poor people, it wouldn't really hit the radar as big as it did. He was burning, you know, Hollywood and Wall Street people and bankers, right? So it hit the radar, right? Oh, how could this guy do this thing? It was a scam, blah, 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 right? So in the court, uh, hearing in the court trial that was taking place right they brought the government representative that was supposed to watch over scams and she was responsible for watching over bernie madoff's scam right or his game that he was playing right and this person he was from the government securities exchange commission this person they put her on the stand. They asked her why she didn't catch the scam because she was responsible for going through the numbers and figuring out if this was a Ponzi scheme or not, right? And she cried on the stand and said, the mathematics was too difficult, right? Now, meanwhile, kick the timeline back eight years from approximately eight years from when the Ponzi scheme hit the daylight, right? Eight years prior to that, in 2000 or so, there was a mathematician that looked at Bernie Madoff's numbers, and within five minutes, this mathematician said, oh, this is a Ponzi scheme. This is a scam. Five minutes it took the guy, right? So he wrote you know, his memo reports and sent them to the uh, Securities Exchange Commission, right? The watchdog, the government watchdog, to tell them that this is a Ponzi scheme. This is a scam, right? The government did nothing. They interviewed this guy after this Madoff thing, the poop hit the fan and people found out, oh, this guy burned people, rich people for $50 billion, right? They interviewed him and the guy says, look, man, I looked at the numbers and it was obvious. It's a Ponzi scheme. How could this guy get away with all this? He goes, because the whole system is corrupt, right? He said he sent letters in two or three times to the government to tell them, hey, this is a Ponzi scheme. This is billions of dollars of Ponzi scheme. But the government did nothing, right? This person, knowing mathematics, avoided getting burned because he realized it was a Ponzi scheme. If you don't know mathematics, people who can manipulate numbers can make a piece of crap look like cake, okay? You have to learn math. That would be 6 p.m. for me. If it works for you, that's splendid. But again, I don't want to screw up your scheduling. When were you planning to have it on Saturday? I, I hadn't scheduled it yet, right? So I'll keep this in mind. Look for the announcement either on Patreon, Twitter, Gab, Minds, or on Discord of when we're going to do it. And uh, I'll try to make sure it's this. Okay, Olive? Fun fact. Bernie Madoff was a, was a Hofstra University alumnus where I used to go to school. <laughs> was he twitching, Jason? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> what a joke that thing was. Yeah, I know about Bernie Madoff. Yeah. And that's the kicker, right? Mathematician looked at this. Went, hey, this is a Ponzi scheme. Well, who, who in their right mind would give this Joe Blow money? Right? Who, who would? people did right they were looking for quick cash right he was giving returns up the yin yang and just to let you know what a ponzi scheme is here i'm going to show you this is what a ponzi scheme is right there's a lot of these around there's a lot of these around right this is a ponzi scheme Joe Blow comes along 
and talks to all these Joe Blows here. They got money. This guy wants money. All right. Thanks, Chisho. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Olaf. Uh, I'll try to remember. I gotta put 10, 10 a.m. here for myself, so I don't forget. Okay. He even got banks investing people's money. Yeah. Why did he get banks investing people's money? Because those investors, fund managers, were getting kickbacks. Right? They're getting paid off. They didn't look at the numbers. They didn't care. Those fund managers, most of them are Joe Blows. They're they know nothing. I've talked to some of them. They're simpletons. They don't they don't really know what's going on. They're just getting bureaucracy reports coming in from the top telling them to push this fund, to push this, to push this, to push this. That's it. Most of them know nothing. Like really. Okay. So these guys have lots of money, right? And they need to, or they want to grow the money because they don't know what to do with their money, right? The only thing they've done in their lives is to make more money, right? Not all of them, but some people, that's the only thing they care about is to make more money. And then once you make a ton of money, as Biggie says, more money, more problems, right? So you gotta do something with your money. So they need to invest it to have differential accumulation, make more than, it, in not only inflation but to beat the averages we've talked about this with differential equation right so they this guy's the idea guy here's a light bulb whoop, whoop. Bop, 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 bop. this guy's an idea guy sees these guys with lots of money they don't know what to do with it he says i got an idea hey i'll put out this little report throw in some functions in there some formulas make it a little complicated because these guys don't know mathematics <laughs> they're nobody look at these suckers look at these suckers right he talks to these guys and these guys give this guy money right so now this guy has a pool of money right nice he's got some money right now in this function he tells these people look inflation is two percent inflation is two percent right the stock market the averages right is five percent where things are rising what people are making you want to beat the averages right so averages five percent which is still a lot so bernie madoff this guy comes along tells these guys i'm gonna beat this right you put your money anywhere else the best you'll do you'll get five percent return I'll give you 7% return per year, right? So this guy comes along and says, I'm giving you 7%. Right on, these guys say, right on, right? So these guys give this guy their money, and this guy returns 7% to these guys, right? Where's the scam? Here's the scam. This guy has taken their money, and he's giving back 7% of their money back to them every year, right? So he's taking 100% of whatever they were willing to invest and giving them back 7%. So let's keep the numbers simple. Let's say this guy took $100 or $100,000 or $100 million or $1 billion. This guy took $50 billion plus some, right? Let's assume he took $100 from these guys total. You can add a multiplier to this, whatever you want, right? And he's giving back 7%. So he's giving back $7 back to these guys every year. So he can live on this money for a while. And this guy was burning money. He's buying houses, yachts, cars, traveling, big expensive dinners, parties up the yin yang, right? So he's burning through this money. So he's giving these guys back $7 out of the 100, right? But he's burning, let's say, twenty dollars twenty dollars burned so at the end of the year 100 minus 20 is 80 and he's given seven dollars back to those guys right so he's got 73 dollars left right my like he's making a he's burning a lot of money right he's got 73 dollars back 
uh, or left in this fund. But every year, because he's running a fund, he has to do yearly reports. He has to show this thing growing, right? Where he's invested money. That's where his piece of paper that he had here, scam mathematics, he was writing things out saying, oh, I'm investing here, investing here, investing here, investing here, and we're making like 15% return, right? Or 9% return. So he's giving back 7% and he's making 9% return on this, right? So theoretically speaking, he should be having $109 in this fund, right? How does he get away with that? Don't they get suspicious? Check this out. He ran this for 20 plus years, right? Now, this fund is decreased. He had 100. Now he's got 73 at the end of the year. And he has to show that he's made money. Where does he get his money? Oh, this is where he gets his money. He throws a party, right? Boop, extravagant party. Invites all these Joe Blows to come to the party and bring guests, right? He writes brilliant little reports. This is how much money we've made, right? So these guys, they got money to burn. That means they got friends that have money to burn. So the word gets out, right, that, hey, we're getting 7% return. These guys' friends are over here, right? They're only getting 5%. They're getting burned, right? They're getting 5%. They're getting 7%. These guys are chasing the dough. Those guys are making a bigger difference, right? So these guys go, hey, I'm going to give money to this guy. So this guy, the following year and during the year, he finds more suckers. People that don't know mathematics, right? With more money and gets an injection of another $100, right? Or $100 million or a $1 billion. He pays them back. With other suckers money exactly so another hundred dollars comes along now at the beginning of next year or during the year right now he's got 173 dollars in his fund Woo -hoo -hoo, rock and roll right he can burn more than 20 dollars now let's say he's burning 40 dollars buying more yachts more parties right because it's a great return on investment throw a party you get more money coming in because these Joblos bring other Joblos that invest their money. Invest, give this guy money, right? He burns $40 and returns 7% of this. What's 7% of 73? More money, more friends. So $173, $173 times 0 0.07. That's twelve dollars and eleven cents and eleven cents. Look at that. So another twelve dollars and eleven cents. Twelve dollars and eleven cents goes to these guys. The rest of these guys, right? That wouldn't be that. Actually, it would be more because the hundred was here. Whatever it was, right? It doesn't make a difference. Let's say it's twenty dollars. Doesn't matter. Here, let's make this twenty dollars, right? Whoop. Another twenty dollars goes out. Twenty dollars. So that's sixty dollars total. Subtract this. You got $113. Wow. And this guy's living large. Yeah. Woohoo. Rock and roll. Guess what? Time to throw a party. Right? Throw another party. Oh, these guys had friends. These guys had friends. Everybody's got friends. They got a lot of money. They don't know what to do with. Let's give this guy money. $50 billion worth. Right? You got the mathematician here. Going what the what are you guys crazy what are you guys insane <laughs> right can't last right no it didn't last got burned at the end after 20 years the guy got caught right crazy crazy this sounds like most multi-level marketing scheme yeah that's what it is that's a ponzi scheme right i have some friends who are constantly hounding people to join their team yeah kind of genius problem is a lie always winds up biting you in the ass inevitably yeah now they are making profits <laughs> is this how social security works social security is a different beast man social security is it's is done for 
right? One of the reasons it's done for, let's talk about social security here. Let me, let me give you a little lay down of social security. Just why this Ponzi scheme is, in, is absolutely insane, all right? So let me erase this. Fun. <laughs> right? That's why if these people were smart, they'd be supporting content creators, right? At least they get something for their money, right? They get a little bit of education so they don't get burned by Bernie Madoff, right? And his like. Take a look at this. Here's, here's, here's social security. I'm laughing, but social security is a disaster. Like really, it's a disaster, right? Here's social security. Here's a whole bunch of people. Working class. They don't have Madoffs. <laughs> Not that you want Madoffs, right? Here's a whole bunch of people. Here's the government, right? Told those people that they have to give a certain amount of money in taxes burned by Bernie <laughs> they have to give a certain amount of taxes into Social Security right and the government says you work for 20 years 30 years 40 years let's say 30 years when you get old right when you get old there's gonna be a bunch of these people certain percentages ain't gonna be around no more right they're done so let's take five people and make you know let's say four of them survive to the ripe old age of 65 right so let's say they're working from the time they're 25 right years old 30 years you're 55 years old years old now these guys are putting money into social security right and the government runs their numbers and says social security is going to be returning I don't know what it is 3% per year 4% per year 5% per year so whatever money that these people have put in right over the years and it's not in one lump sum right as you work you put money into social security into retirement or whatever it is in my part of the world you work until you are 62 and then you get you get your pension okay and the kicker is how much is that pension really gonna buy right because they haven't accounted for inflation right so show social security pension your retirement plan assumes that there's two percent inflation per year right two percent inflation in my part of the world anyway right so when these guys give money to the government the government promises them a certain return when they reach 55 or 62 because i think 55 is the earliest that you can start collecting social security i believe so anyway right so 30 to 40 years to 40 years right so it could be 65 years old, or 62 as stick says right the government says hey we're going to give you a certain amount of money per year or per month okay and the government the numbers what they've done they've counted on more people joining the workforce throughout this 30 years right and contributing to this fund right so they're expecting money to be coming in okay they're expecting money to to be coming in they're expecting two percent inflation okay that means they need to be paying out on the social security when they because when they get the money they're not just sitting on the money they're making the money work so they're expecting interest rates to be more than two percent right they're expecting for there to be interest so the fund that they have actually grows so there's two gro growth factors in there JJT how are you doing welcome to a live stream so there's two growth factors there there's a growth from interest and there's the growth from people putting money into the funds right 
So what's the problem in the Western world for the last 10 plus years? Okay, two problems. The workforce has gone down. So there isn't as much money going into this social security fund. The other thing is right now, interest rates are sitting at negative zero or negative. So for the last 10 years, right? You're sitting at zero percent. So this fund hasn't been growing, right? Meanwhile, they've been paying people off because if you think about it, this isn't one group. Every year, there's more people retiring, 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 retiring. So the government social security is dependent on growth. They need growth in interest and they, or they need interest rate to be at a certain level and they need the workforce to be constantly pumping money into this thing. The workforce is not constantly pumping money here because a lot of people, young people are out of work. The job market is not there, right? Automation kicking in. The, the economy is not as healthy as you assume it is, right? Or they tell you it is. And interest rates have been sitting at 10%. There goes their mathematics. Their functions are gone. Their assumptions are done for, right? So they're running out of money to pay people up, right? And growth from new people coming to your country. And growth from, yeah, sticks. And growth from new people coming in their country but the new people coming in your country they're a higher a higher a lower wage so again it's less funds going in right so no matter how you look at it there's desperation in governments right now trying to increase the money here because they know people need to be paid out right what's been happening governments have been running out of money so they're telling people okay you can't retire 55 you can't retire 65 like Greece is one example now retirement they're kicking it down the road and saying okay 68 years old when you're 68 you can get your money back right or, or you can start applying for Social Security right and get money here's another way they've been doing it let's say they promise these people a thousand dollars a month right they don't have a thousand dollars a month to pay people when these guys retire, when they're retiring, they're expecting a thousand dollars a month. All of a sudden, the government, the company, the county, whoever's been managing their money, turns to them and says, "Look, we can't give you a thousand. We're going to give you five hundred. Five hundred dollars a month." Now, these people who are retiring, who are expecting to get a thousand to be able to live, to be able to pay rent, to be able to pay their taxes, buy food right all of a sudden their incomes cut in half now this isn't hearsay this isn't what could happen this is exactly what has been happening in certain parts of the world in the United States this is exactly what has been happening okay this increase in retirement age is exactly what has what's been happening right so I tell people younger than 65 55 or whatever it is right if you expect Social Security money to come to you to be worth anything for you to buy anything, you're out of your mind. You got to worry. You got to think about your own retirement, right? You got to think about your own finances. You better learn your mathematics because if you think a centralized institution is here to take care of you and they've done their math the right way, all their assumptions in play you're out of your mind right now you have to work until you're 70 and longer five hundred dollars today don't even pay the rent no don't even pay they don't even pay nothing like really it doesn't pay anything five hundred dollars five hundred dollars a month what does that do oh that's like that that that's a phenomenal income for a high level YouTube person right? that has over a hundred thousand subscribers, right? <laughs> Crazy. Like we don't, I don't, not, not even this, right? I can't wait to learn how to do decentralized math. Sounds messy. No, it's not. Decentralized math is, is pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Don't believe what 
centralized institutions tell you. That's the first thing about decentralized math. But making people work until 68 years old makes it harder for younger people to get the job. It's a cycle, it's a perpetual, it's, it, it's a feedback loop, JJ. It literally is a feedback loop. That's what we're seeing right now, right? They should institute a fine, your replacement, so you can retire. <laughs> Apprenticeship, maybe. What's your highest view on YouTube video? Uh, my highest view, I think, uh, we're probably around 200,000 or something like this. Uh, void. But it's not the view, like, it really depends on the content and stuff like this. And YouTube, every every little while, they reduce the amount of payments they're giving you, right? Google's greedy SOBs. They are greedy little MFs. I don't even know what I'm use, uh, using. I'm from Finland, and our government is testing out universal basic income. Uh, it can dodge. Uh, it can dodge. Uh, this $500 problem but causes problems in investment to higher pension pay yeah the universal basic income is only gonna work uh, short term I put out a little video regarding universal basic income what the problems are for it, uh, it it's a band-aid it's not gonna fix the solution it'll kick up inflation uh, and people universal basic income they what the reason one of the reasons governments are thinking about rolling these out that way they're not responsible for people anymore right because they made a lot of promises that are not going to be paid out uh, but who are we to decide when someone else should leave the workforce agreed legendary legendary rob boss 100 percent agreed they force people to retire and a lot of people don't want to retire retire and do what if they love their job why they have to retire right we should allow all ages to work on what they are passionate about. 100% agreed on that. Depends on the work, though. Some people don't last. Like manual labor, it's taxing. Okay. Uh, carpentry is taxing. Tile work, taxing. Right? Uh, it burns you out. You can get burnt out physically. Your body gets destroyed and mentally and emotionally. Okay. I feel like most people forget that this world we live in is built by people usually not much smarter than themselves it works but it's unwise to put too much trust into these systems sometimes yeah 100% agree twitching Jason once you figure out how the system works you're like wow this thing works <laughs> this thing should not work it's a Ponzi scheme right don't get involved in the Ponzi schemes okay that is the power of mathematics really it's it's incredible cool conversation today by the way i like it i like talking about this stuff i know it goes into the realm of politics to a certain degree but it is mathematics right worst advice is save your money let them grow yeah best advice is find something you're passionate about invest in your passion right invest in yourself that's one of the best advices uh, that you can get invest in yourself that doesn't mean go buy Lamborghinis and crap like that that's material invest in yourself in your in your health in your in your education but in the right way don't go into debt fifty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars to these centralized institutions to get in and get a piece of paper that is worthless right think about what it is you're doing invest in your community invest in your in your um, in your social network invest in yourself what makes you happy right great explanation of social security looks like our uh, feedback loop was set up with old assumptions I never assumed to collect from any mandatory funds it's just another fee to me yeah agreed I I don't expect there to be anything wait really <laughs> no it's crazy people don't uh, take in consideration that the value of say a dollar will become lower which means you get less for your dollar 100 but at least you save your money <laughs> at least you save your money <laughs> hilarious <laughs> that being said sticks you do need a certain amount of cash you need a certain amount of liquidity 
and the best liquidity is having currency now don't have that float too large but make sure you have enough to be able to live for a couple of months if you need to right two three six months preferably okay have i asked this before do you have any options on common core oh common core is horrendous man uh, opinions on common core centralization of education is uh, worked for a time because it was about industrialization and stuff like this centralization of education has not worked for a number of decades now it's destroying people's lives I've been saving up for a piano something I really want to learn nice olive you can get used pianos for nothing if you if you look around people will 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 give you the piano for free if you just take it off their hands really okay and you don't have to get an expensive one if you're just learning people who make uh, money have the money going out increasing then coming back in then it keeps going like this yeah it's basically a velocity of money you want velocity of money to be fairly rapid you should do that piano is life piano is life my father taught me to save my money from very early on i started my job my first job at 12 years old yeah yeah for me too i started working in uh, construction my family was in construction industry i guess so i was on the construction side basically residential and stuff working when i was like 13 12 13 right yeah man i can't wait we have a very strong entrepreneurship education culture in finland we have a lot of resources for people to learn how to run the numbers and make business plans before they start my passion projects won't pay out unfortunately you'd be surprised uh, sorceries uh, right now the game has changed you could make money living your life living your passion uh, in many different fields right really like for me people were looking at me all wacko when I said I was making math videos putting them online right they're all like oh man how much time are you spending on this I go, oh, a lot of time right and they're like are you getting paid I go no and they're like oh you're an idiot I go on oh, no you guys are an idiot because you don't understand where technology is going where we're headed right am I making a ton of money no but it's my passion right so I do even a little bit helps and once you have a passion and you're creating something that means you're not spending right and one of the main things everybody has to consider when it comes to managing your budget budgets it's not about how much money you're bringing in even though that matters is how much money is going out manage your expenses you're a rich man or a woman of course you can get pianos for free exactly yeah you can get pianos for free look into what it takes to move a piano though yes and that's the reason why you can get pianos for free when people are moving when they have a piano it costs a lot of money to move that piano we've had our family has had we gave we had we had a piano we had an org two level org organ organ we gave away for free we couldn't do it the piano was uh no one bought it the first time we moved we moved in and then someone bought it the second time takes some muscle now like you show no i don't do piano moves anymore i've done way too many moves uh, of that type in my life finland have a good education system yeah they do not like your neighbor sweden where i live sweden is chaos really there's that big of a difference between finland and sweden eh? we have a pretty good education system in norway could probably be better though yeah a so do you have any idea on how governments can make more money how governments can make more money uh, you know what <sighs> yeah the kicker is the question is you need the time frame in there right now most governments have been functioning under a five-year business plan which is ridiculous right for governments to make more money improve your healthcare system improve your education improve public transportation 
improve the food supply you're not it's gonna cost you a little bit in the beginning right but in the long run the health of your citizens improves the mobility of your citizens improves education of your citizens improve and you'll see return on that big time it's like a family right if you have kids put the time energy and money into educating your children properly because in the back end whatever you spent on them is going to pay for itself a hundred times over if you don't spend the time energy and money on your kids to educate them properly to make them wise into the ways of the world that's going to cost you a lot down the road All right our politicians keep warning us about Swedish conditions if the piano is a couple of stairs up have fun yeah more uh, you know what it's surprisingly using the moving stuff you can do it I've seen movers do it pretty well but man you need expertise in that more teachers should start these educational streams agreed JB Jane J bro Jane agreed 100% it's my hope from day one when I started creating these videos it was my hope that more people would start creating educational videos and there have been since I started creating like 12 years ago right there's a lot of people creating math content now and that is for the betterment of our societies okay streaming like this is the next step right Sweden is going down the drain the amount of people that walk out of school with full degrees is less and less is it really wow Thank you for the follow classic hype thank you for the subs for those of you sub thank you for the follows for those of you who followed governments can make uh, as much money as they want the trick is to add value yeah they can uh, to a certain degree they can print indoctrination is at the worst in schools yeah political correctness takes over education handful of issues yeah it's central education is just indoctrination it's like moving a big sofa up the stairs to an uh, apartment uh, it's worse than a big sofa <laughs> the piano is worse than a big sofa its center of gravity is tighter and it's it's different some sofas are are light to carry I live on ground level right on me too thankfully teaching kids is crucial but we're starting to run into that social security problem where we just don't have enough people or growth educated young adults don't focus on building families anymore no because they can't afford it a lot of people right and they had they didn't buy into the BS that you should start a family right away why I rather lift the sofa than the piano to be fair yeah me too me too some sofas can make uh, can make into two pieces I have a plan learn piano then teach it to my kids 100 awesome Olive awesome make videos for them <laughs> fun fun okay gang should we call the stream that was a couple of fun hours I guess I just uh, a bad experience with my slippery heavy sofa yeah pianos are harder pianos are harder and wow if it tilts wow be careful and then you have to tune them after you move them right mech e senior here thought i would drop in while i did my modeling love the content classic hype thank you for the for the twitch prime sub thank you for popping in i hope you're i don't know how much you caught of it but we had a good stream today it was fun i just have to get piano and some jids eventually what are jids i don't know jobs jids gids jits i don't know what jits are 10 a.m i gotta write this down i'm gonna erase this so i don't forget so olive i think i'm gonna try to do the i'll try to announce it tomorrow okay 10 a.m 10 a.m uh, sanj saturday we try we try
kids all oh, kids eventually and some kids eventually i just have to get a piano and some kids you don't have any kids yet <laughs> oh funny thanks for the chat folks i was lurking while doing paperwork awesome dragons 108 dragons thanks for your time gandhi uh, you're welcome i don't know if i'm gandhi or not i'm not that much of a peace activist i'm out have a good night good night good night good stream as always take care everyone nice to meet you nice to have you here later later alan i can't even pronounce that really enjoyed the stream i've never seen anything like this so it's a great surprise awesome awesome glad you enjoyed glad you enjoyed okay gang so it looks like saturday we're gonna do one i'll announce it most likely tomorrow okay bye Aleph. hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic next few days okay and i'll see you guys saturday most likely at 10 a.m pdt pacific west coast west coast of canada bye for now